I am so excited to dive in. I just want to tell the the the, the viewers at home. I want to tell everybody how the hell we know each other. So just as I was like emerging as a little chick out of my little cocoon of life um, and really starting to get my sea legs, I was somehow connected with Jordan. A friend of mine had referred me to how like smart and brilliant she was at helping her behind the scenes with her business and laying out her course and laying out who she was and her messaging. And she and I met and I was like, oh, can I scoop you off the shelf of life? And she kind of flew out actually to Los Angeles and we did like a deep dive and um, it's all things like cute and embarrassing and probably impressive all in one because I think about like who I am and who I was and how I've become maybe more of myself and how I'm still a hot mess and it's all good. Um, but then she and I saw each other a few different times at like conferences that we would go to. And I was like, can we like be best friends? And can you like room with me? And can we eat dinners together? And can we talk about the universe and God and life and dating and everything else? And I just like love her, like to know her is to love her. You'll, you'll get that in about nine seconds. And all the while she went on to really grow an intentionally built business um, she has dialed a lot in. She's, she's basically because she knows so much. I feel like you, Jordan are so good at synthesizing and pulling all the stuff that's like really got some skin on its bones. And you've kind of, you've kind of helped women see like where in your business should you really work smart and what's just like extra, like working hard. Cause you, you've consumed all of that all that's out there to know about like marketing and business. And then you've sort of added your own spark and made such a gorgeous inroad helping women to build like really cool businesses that I think are simplified. I think you know how to simplify things with systems, but also with like the right offer for the right person at the right price point, which makes all of this, you guys, all of this so much more worthwhile than trying to go be the next Taylor Swift where it's like, okay, that's my marching orders. I need to go get 4 billion people to add like and subscribe to me every day. It's like, that's not the task. That's not what's needed. What's needed is a really clear, simplified business that's scalable and has all the right foundational blocks. And so we're going to get into that today. So welcome to us, Jordan. Thank you so much for coming here and being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I know I was thinking back. I was like, oh my gosh, we totally met on like Facebook Messenger. You were looking for a graphic designer. Oh my god. And so I know, isn't that so random? And yeah, I, I like can't like, believe I that. think I know one. <laughs> mm. And then you were like, Oh, actually, like I was meant to meet you because I don't even remember who it was that, that connected us or that originally told you about me. But uh yeah, it's always like a timing thing and just you know, you never know what opportunities are going to come from just being a giver, you know, like I just was like, Oh, she needs help with a graphic designer. So I'm just (laughs) help her with graphic designer. I love that you remembered that one point because that is really cool. Cause then really quickly we started talking. I was like, wait a minute, you do that. And you were literally just being who you are, which is like, I'm here to serve. I like, (laughs) I like women. I like making friends. I feel like you're, that's like your best role is like your such a good friend. And I feel like that you could write a whole book on just that, what it's like to be a vibe for women Mm -hmm. and how that can grow a business just in and of itself. And there you go. That's how we met. So let's talk first, before we get into some of the like meat and potatoes of what you do in your business and how you can help women as, as, as immediately as today to start thinking differently about their business. Let's talk about why you got into the particular lane that you're in, why this fascinated you, um, why you saw sort of a a whole missing piece in the space and why you've been leaning into the areas of systems. And then we'll even get into like the VIP days and stuff like that. But what initially Mm -hmm. led you to the particular angle that you took on all of this? Yeah. So, you know, having the the company name of System Saved Me, there's uh, a lot said there in very little words. And the reason for that is because I uh, struggle with three chronic illnesses. So I um, have celiac, I have hypothyroidism, and then chronic fatigue. So truly, <laughs> System Saved Me um, on a daily basis, because there are days that are just not 
happening for me. And then there are days that I'm, I'm good. And so in order to stay as uh, consistent as possible in business, I have to rely on systems. And so I knew that in business, what area lit me up the most was when people were still able to, you know, take the time that a lot of, a lot of times life just kind of takes over, you know, life be life. And I say that all the time, you know, that doesn't mean that your business then needs to take a, take a halt as well. So for me, it was, how can we set up those systems? How can we have those recurring tasks that you probably don't even need to be doing anyway? Uh, take them off your plate and get them in, uh, again, just a routine. So that way when you're here, it's great, but also when you're here, it's still great, you know? So that, that really was the core of why systems was the entry point for me in the space and will be something I continue to be obsessed with <laughs> moving forward. It makes forward. a lot of sense. And now that you say that, I remember that mm-hmm. you have always had that as part of your life, the struggle yeah. with some of these things, but you know why I forgot? Because you don't present with the energetic like fatigue it's not a word I would use to describe you and really speaks to a your mindset b your faith c the Mm -hmm. community you've built around you um and also very much what you just said which is you've Mm -hmm. built in um a whole world of structure so that you can thrive no matter what's going on what would you say is one system because there's definitely a few but What's yeah. one system that you think is like critical that mm. when people have this right in their business, it frees up like so much more bandwidth? Oh, so it's a little bit dependent on the business. So I'm going to speak to uh, mainly like course creators, even a little bit of service providers and not so much like e-commerce physical, because that's like kind of a whole nother beast. But um, in those two areas, I would say that generally the area that is... I think most impactful to the business is, and I want to say like any client facing sales oriented system. So that could be a webinar, that could be a sales call, that could be a, however you bring on people. And the reason for that is because that is a lot of times the first time people are experiencing your business, like from a touch point perspective. And so yes, there's a ton of backend systems that would be great to have cleaned up and, you know, crossed what is it? Cross T's dotted eyes. However, the client facing systems or the customer or the student facing systems are the ones that are going to get you those word of mouth, those referrals, those additional uh, marketing points that again, if you do stuff behind the scenes, yeah, you're seeing them, but it's not kind of duplicating or even tripling your efforts because no one is seeing them. So I like to make sure that again, the onboarding or that initial sales system is really spot on. And that doesn't mean that it, you know, is what people think of typically where it's like super automated and robotic. Like you can create really engaging and personality driven systems in that format of, you know, I have a webinar, but then there's, you know, confetti at a certain point that like sprouts out, or there's a video that gets sent. I have, I had one client who did a video for each day of the week, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whenever people were actually watching the webinar. And she was saying like, Hey, happy Sunday. Like, I see that you're watching, you know, the webinar. I hope it's going well for you. If you have any questions, you know, shoot me a a DM. And again, it's something that feels very organic, feels very, personality driven, but doesn't mean that every Sunday she has to film a video and say like, happy Sunday, whatever, whatever. It can just be a part of what's already automated. Yeah. It's baked in. I was just talking to somebody this morning about that, where in one way you could say my business is like super simple because there's one really clear system, which is I have this main piece of content called the podcast. And then four times a year, I mean, this is at least how it's been yep. four times a year. We do our launch where I do a five day boot camp, yep. and that's it. And actually yep. now that we're where we are and we are at a certain level of consistency with all of that, I, I kind of want to disrupt that and like shake the tree a little bit and see what other yeah. fruit we can like get off of this tree. But what's so cool about that is 
It's just dialed in. I don't have to like think about every day. What should I do? Where should I sell? What should I sell? It's like, no, this is what I do. I have this piece of content, which nurtures four yep. times a year. I'm like, hi, everybody get a chance <laughs> to like gather around the fire pit, get to know me. Here's what I have to sell. And because I would rinse and repeat that system, rinse and repeat that system. We, we were able to grow that to a $6 million business and then on and on from there very, very consistently. So, um, I think that that makes a lot of sense in that vein. What I will say is I think where people struggle and we can go, we'll go pretty deep with this because there's many splinters of, of paths we're going to take. But I yeah. think that that suggests two things that need to be dialed in your comfort level with being visible. Yes. And then your offer. Yes right? If you want to make more money, make more offers. People are like, oh, right. Damn. <laughs> so um, let's talk about the visibility first. Yeah. Where do you think, especially working with women, women mm. get stuck the most and where do they sometimes break through? What do you see that could unlock someone who very much needs more of that visibility? Oh yeah. So I think one area is struggling to, uh, I guess, prepare yourself for negative comments or for other people's opinions. I think that that is generally, again, it's like, okay, if my hair isn't perfect or, you know, I have a chip nail or whatever, which I have, like people are going to say something about it. And then therefore I just can't, I can't be seen like that. And I get that. Um, I grew up uh, my father was a, a college and pro football coach. Um, so you want to talk about visible? It was, it was very visible. And um, I learned at a very young age that people are going to say all sorts of things about you that are just untrue. And you have to sit there and be okay with being misunderstood. Like the things that when I think back, but the things that were said about me when I was a 12 or 13 year old girl from grown men who live in their mother's basements, it's very jarring, right? It's like, oh my gosh, like that, that was a wild time. Um, and you think about now in entrepreneurship as a grown woman, it's like that stuff is still, you know, prevalent, unfortunately, but you know, it can be, it can be really tough to want to still step out and, and show your face and whatnot when, it doesn't matter if you have your hair perfect or the lighting's great or whatever the case is, people are going to say what they're going to say and you still have to continue to show up. And that's something that I think you do excellently, Kathy, with just, again, your podcast, your socials, all the things is just continuing to show up regardless. And that I think is the hardest part for women because we get picked apart all the time, whether it's like, oh, like she's dressed down, like, you know, she's let herself go or, oh, she's too dressed up. Like, who does she think she is? And it's like, okay, seriously, <laughs> how are we supposed to win? How are we supposed to get out here, have amazing, impactful businesses when no matter how we show up, literally we're getting thrown all of these commentary and opinions and we just have to sit there and kind of let it gloss over us so it's for me it's a muscle but that's that's what I see most women struggling with and I think my background has made me uh stronger at that a little bit um it doesn't affect me as much but it doesn't mean that it still doesn't suck yeah you know? and I think just calling yeah. attention to it is so helpful right just like yeah. acknowledging this Mark. Like my daughter was going to get her ears pierced for the first time the other day. Mm -hmm. She's, she just turned seven mm -hmm. and she, her sister who means well, her older sister's like, it's not going to hurt at all. And I was like, it is going to hurt for right. like five minutes, five minutes and then you'll be okay. And she's like, but she said, it's not going to hurt. I'm like, no, no, it's going to hurt, but not right. like you can't handle it, but like, just own it. Like this exists and you can be with it. Totally. That's the move. I remember interviewing yes. Nora, Nora Jones was on the podcast this, this year. And I said to her naively, I said, what was it like for you? I mean, you won like a thousand right. Grammys at the age of 22. She goes, worst year of my life. I go, um, Ooh, not expecting that. Why? Yeah. She said, because there I was at 22, just fiddling around with a piano and some friends. We made something that people liked. And then for every comment, that this was like the most gorgeous, like breakthrough mm. jazz slash pop record. 
there was a uh, an opposing comment like, why are you overhyping her? She's not Billie Holiday. She's not Ella Fitzgerald. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. I never said I was anything. Why is yeah. everyone talking about me? Why does everyone have an opinion about me? So then the more people would actually build her up, it was like, yeah. why all the hype? She's this, And then she literally went through like such a severely dark place for such a long time. What I mm -hmm. like to say is when you stand out, the comments will stand out. However, make no mistake, already people are commenting about you. They're just not exactly. posting it on social media. Like, exactly. let's all be real. Right now in your life, there's somebody at Carline this morning who thought weird things about you. You have a friend <laughs> from college who sees what you do on Facebook and is like, oh, I roll. You have people all around you all the time who perceive you in a way and make up a meaning about you. Yeah. Anyway, so mm -hmm. at least here, it's out in the open. You're like, great. <laughs> Now I just know what you already all think about me, which is yeah. only going to hurt you when you co-sign it, right? If you co-sign yep. it. Yep. But I think it's actually a badge of honor to be like, great, I can allow for the world to think whatever they want about me because I have no control over it. But you're right. Very important to get to a place where you're just real with that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, and this is where I think we can go into like lots of deep tangents because this is really moving towards like the 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 crux of what you've, you've been doing so well, but when women make their offers, I know that you probably like put your head in your hands sometimes and you're like, why would you put in all of that energy and have to withstand all the things we just said? Right. And that's your best offer. You're underpaying yourself. You'd make more money just being a barista awesome. and it's not working smart. You're just working too hard. So explain okay. where we might get this wrong and where we might wind up getting it right. Mm hmm. Well, because I think again, as women, we're we're not equipped um, with again the the courage, I would say, versus confidence to put offers out there and actually feel good about them. Because again, there's this inner dialogue, and I know that I have it, where it's just like, again, like who do you think you are? Again, I was charging for my VIP days. What was it three thousand dollars for four hours of my time? And I remember when I was dating my boyfriend, now husband, he was like, "You're making more than a law firm." Like, and he even, you know, confirmed like, "Who do you think you are?" A little bit when we were first dating, and I was just like, "Who? Who do I think I am? I don't have a law degree. <laughs> like, you know, I don't have. I'm making my own pricing." However, you know, when I looked at the value I was bringing, that truly was the value that I was bringing, and so you really have to sit and, and really fall in love with your offers. Like if you aren't super jazzed and like lit up and excited about what you're selling, people can read that people can smell it. People can see it. Like it's everywhere. And that doesn't mean be fake, right? That means that if there's something about your offer that isn't allowing you to just show up and express because you like literally are bursting at the seams so excited then there's got to be something there where we got to kind of lift up the hood and say okay well what is it do you not like the calls do you not like the size do you not like the length of the the program and so getting rid of as many of those parts of your offer that just aren't again lighting you up is then how you can show up and be so pumped about your offer. Because I think honestly, a lot of the, yes, like the messaging is super, super important and the energetics behind it. So if I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, I've got like an event coming up and it's going to be fun and there's going to be people there and you're going to meet some cool people and learn some stuff, like who cares, right? Nobody cares. But if I'm like, oh my gosh, like all of my best friends are coming they are sharing the gems, the juiciest of juice. Like if I'm lit up by it, then y'all are going to perk your ears up and be like, why is she so excited? I want to know why she's excited. Am I excited? Do I want to be there? So the energetics behind the messaging also needs to be there. And I think that with women, we're again, told to kind of be more demure, I guess, and not think too much of ourselves or show up too big. Uh, and I just, I don't believe that. So yeah. show up as big as you want. And that doesn't mean be loud. That doesn't mean be who you are not, 
but that just means that however you show up as excited and happy and jazzed, everybody gets jazzed about stuff, you know, and it shows in different ways. So just lean into that when it comes to your offers. Yeah. It's a hundred percent true that the energy either makes it or breaks it. Totally. And I love this conversation about offers because when people ask me like, what's the next step I should take in my business, no matter where you, where people are at, I'm always like, where's your offer? <laughs> They're like, well, before I make an offer, I wanted to grow my list to 10,000. Nope. Before I grew my, made an offer, I wanted to grow my podcast. To, it's like, no, right. the first thing I ever did in my business was make an offer, right? Because business means there's economics. Business means yep. you're getting paid. That is what makes something a business. There's revenue attached to it. And so yep. there is no way around the practice of, hi, I am here to offer you this value. And every business ever started with one conversation with one customer. And then it led to two customers. And then those two customers, if they were satisfied, told a friend, and now you have like five people. And next thing you know, you're like, I was just meal prepping for one family. She introduced me to her friend. Now I can't take anybody else. I've got six families. I'm done. That's how quickly it goes from yep. making the offer. And so I say this again and again and again, because it's the very unsexy thing we don't want to hear. What we want to hear is that there's mm-hmm. some way to grease the wheels where if we do this, 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 and this, the money will just pour down from the sky. It's like, yeah, the money actually will pour down from the sky because when you are standing, like you just said, in the energy of, I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait to solve this problem for you. Let's go. People are pretty darn good with that. Like that's really what they need to be excited. And they're like, great, here we go. Yeah. When people have things like podcasts or they have built an audience on Instagram, wherever you have an audience, now the way to really monetize that audience is to make bigger offers, right? And to continue to make those offers grow. You mentioned VIP days. I want to talk about that. That's really something that you help people to design and to create. What is a VIP day? And why is it something that people should have in their arsenal of offers? Oh, yes. So I recognize my bias, but I do really get excited about VIP days because again, similar to systems, they really have allowed me to show up and be really great for my clients without the long-term uh, drain that can come from having a longer-term uh, client. So VIP days, how I define them are that they are um, usually a uh, pared down one day within 24-hour opportunity for you to resolve a client's problem. So whatever. So we have like website designers, copywriters, financial strategists, coaches, stuff like that, who again, may normally take six weeks, six months, whatever to do a result. And they can take that same framework and pare it down to a one day opportunity, whether that is a strategy, whether it's execution. Um, And I really believe it's a, a special and awesome way to deliver for your clients, because it is, everybody understand it. You know, I'm talking about messaging. It's like, it's one day. And I think with a lot of clients, if you have longer term offers, the lines can get blurred very easily of when something starts and when something ends and scope creep comes up and then it goes down. Right. Um, and scope creep, meaning that you have a set, you know, amount of deliverables, but then you know, the client's like, but this one more thing or this other thing. And that doesn't happen with VIP days. Like you got a day and that is it. Right. And there's also something about VIP days that people trust that you're an expert. Because if you think about somebody who takes six months to do something versus somebody who does it in a day, somebody who does it in a day is efficient. They know their ish, like they are not playing around. Right. And that doesn't mean that the people who have six month offers are playing around. There's just a psychology behind somebody who can get something done faster, has either more experience or has a framework. And I want to trust the framework because it's in the most concise way possible. So there's, you know, ancillary benefits of the VIP day from a 
perception standpoint from clients that again, you get to charge more money for because you do it faster. Right. And that's in every industry. You think about Disney world, you can get the regular, you know, line tickets, or you can get the, the, what is it? Genie pass or whatever. Now it's called lightning lane and you pay more money for the lightning lane because now you get to spend less time in lines. Same thing with, you know, the fastest cars are the most expensive, you know, Uber delivery, right? You can get it faster, like five minutes faster for two ninety nine dollars on the app. It's everywhere in every industry. This is not something I made up. And this is an opportunity for service providers, coaches, consultants, course creators to create that same faster option that's more expensive to get the same result or similar result. Yeah, I love that so much because I think that we sometimes assume that people will pay more if there's more time that you're giving them. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole camp of human beings who say, no, no, I don't have that much time. Right. I want the problem solved yesterday. So I will pay yeah. more because I want this to be over and done with now. I don't want to wait six months to have the answer to this. And I think that it's great to have that before we, we move on from this for somebody who wants to consider creating a, a VIP day offer, it can seem intimidating that mm -hmm. in order to then charge a lot of money for a day of your time, you do need to have the certain expert level of credential, um, and a method and all of these things, but you've worked with so many people on creating their VIP days. What actually is necessary and what can we let go of that would actually just keep us from going ahead and providing value? Cause we keep thinking we need something that we might not need. Totally. So I honestly have seen kind of the, the breaking point, I guess, is around three or four clients. So you don't really need to have tens, twenties, thirties amount of clients. If you've done something a few times across a few different clients, which is where I was at when I switched over to VIP days. And so that's really all you need because you're going to start to see patterns. You're going to start to see trends. And while you may not have an official framework method system, you are actually doing a system that may just need to be refined. So I would say, again, three to four clients minimum. I would say that you don't need any special certifications. I don't have any certifications um, in any, well, I do have my bachelor's and my master's, but I don't have any like systems operations genius or anything like that. Um, I found that VIP day clients generally, I don't want to say don't care about certifications. They just want to know that you can get the result. Like, can you give me the result or not give me the result? And if you can bet, like I'll, you know, pay money because I don't, I don't want to be spending all that time doing stuff. So, um, so yeah, don't need all of those special certifications, get a couple clients under your belt. And then once you do, then you're going to find a more refined method and then you can go, you know, all the way with, with VIP days. And I'll just say this because it's important to refresh the the browser because sometimes it gets like <laughs> clogged with all kinds of thoughts that are not facts. Yeah. You know, I thought about doing VIP days. And so I, I kind of offered them for a minute, but then just based on my business and where my business model is, there's actually, I just hate to sound like there's just too much demand and I don't, it doesn't make sense for me to do it. Okay. Because Agreed. we just have a different situation at this time, but had I known about that earlier, that probably would have been a cool thing to, to, to work in. But what I will say is when I was looking at like, what would I charge to spend an entire day alone with someone? I was like, mm -hmm. well, it would have to be quite a bit for me to even make that time. And so we yep. priced those VIP days at like 15 grand, you guys. And I was like, oh, no sorry. one's going to spend that money. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> People were like, I'm the person who was going to spend that money. I want you all to myself. I want to ask you these nine questions. I want you to look at this copy. I want you to look at my offer. I want you to tell me about my Instagram. I want it all in one day. That's all I want. So it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. We did a few of them, but here's what you need to be reminded of. You don't need hundreds and thousands of people to right. take you up on that, right? When I looked at my audience, were there 40% of the people in my audience who wanted to do that? No, mm -hmm. no, there weren't. But you don't know who's in your audience. There mm -hmm. might be six people in your audience, six that are like, that's the only one I want. I just want that. And it doesn't matter if you do breath work. I want breath work all day just from you. I want to go to, into my somatic stuff. I want, you don't know what people need, right? But yeah. when it's there and you realize that it's there to solve that problem for that kind of person who's 
more interested in saving the time and not the money, there might be a few people in your life like that right now. And you don't, I'm not saying you have to charge $15,000. I mean, this is me. If I'm working with someone on the scaling of their business, which I think in that place, that's the value. Sometimes it depends. Yeah. And I was also spending like, you know, eight hours with them. Right. And so then you look at it and you're like, all right, well, we can get a lot done in eight hours if it's just you and me you and can. your business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can give you, and people would come away being like, that was literally the day I changed my offer. I changed my mindset. I made more money in the quarter than I've ever made in my entire life. Like that was one of the testimonials. I'm like, amazing. Cause I can help people with their abundance stuff. But these are things for you to think about. You don't need the whole world. Yep. You need like a handful of humans, right? It's the right message for the right person. One of the things I want to talk to you about more specifically is your podcast. It's really cool. It's had like a renaissance. You had a podcast. You still have a podcast. You took a little hiatus. You came back, but you came back with like a gusto. Like (laughs) you came back, you are bigger than ever. You joined a network. Let's talk about the podcast and why you doubled down on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I... Started my business May 2016 and started my podcast July 2016. So I had been podcasting for a while. Um, and it felt like in 2020, June 2021, honestly, I was bored by it. It just felt like it got monotonous. It felt like it was robotic and it just wasn't fun anymore. And so again, it's like you think you have to start something, you have to keep it up. It's like, nah, like if it isn't lighting you up, if I'm not excited about it, people could probably tell. So I said, I'm taking a hiatus. I don't know how for how long and we'll just figure it out. So it took a year and a half off, literally didn't do a single podcast episode on there and then came back January of this year and came back with four episodes. And I actually recorded them uh, on the beach at my uh, wedding anniversary with my husband because <laughs> he, I don't know, he was off gallivanting um, and I was just staying at the beach reflecting. And so it was cool because you could hear the waves and people were like, oh my gosh, I felt like I was there with you. And it was just a really cool way to, to come back because again, with sound and stuff, you can play around with that. And, you know, I made a declaration of just like, listen, prepare to be sick of me. I know for the last year and a half, you haven't heard much from me. And now I really want to use my voice to say what I got to say. And so I've been actually a solo podcast, meaning that I don't have any guests on my podcast since January. Uh, I did just have one guest on recently, um, and I probably will sprinkle in some more guests moving forward. However, what it, what it meant to me to bring it back was... I, I was excited again. And that again, just the, uh, I don't know what, not bubble guts, but just like little sparkles in your tummy came back when I thought about it and was not allowing like the judgment of like, oh my gosh, I took a year and a half off. Who the heck is even going to be listening to me? Um, you know, is this going to make me look flaky or all of the, you know, drama in the mind. And I was just like, well, you know what? Like, I'm just going to come back. And if they want to hang, they can. And if they don't, then they don't have to. So I came back be- and I brought the podcast back because I knew that I really did enjoy sharing my advice, my experience, And I had a lot to say because for three years from 2020 until early this year, I was doing my VIP day program and I actually uh, moved it to a course now. And so for three years, all I talked about was VIP days. And so now that I was not breaking free from VIP days, but kind of uh, opening myself up back to just online business in general, I had a lot of like three years worth really of like stuff to say about online business that I hadn't said. So I got busy with it and stayed consistent. And even in January, I was like, man, it'd be really cool to like be paid to podcast. Like that'd be super cool. Thought it, said it out loud to myself and then just kind of let it go. And then, uh, I got, um, introduced to the HubSpot podcast network and they're an awesome team, like hands down, amazing, amazing. Um, and they were like, Hey, like we love your podcast. Like we want you to be one of our creators. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like this is super amazing. And like, I, you know, what was that? Maybe six or seven months after I had restarted my podcast was when that happened. And so, it just felt like such a good fit. I actually use HubSpot in my business. And uh, again, to be in a room full of really amazing creators, you know, they have, you know, uh, JJ from Story Brand. they've got Amy Porterfield, they've got Jenna Kutcher, they've got 
um, Natasha from Shine Online. They have such a diverse group of podcasters. And that was extremely important to me was like, there needs to be a diversity. Like, I'm not going to be like the token black person. Like, I'm not going to be, again, like the one colored person in all the photos. I want to be surrounded by color. I want vibrancy. I want perspectives. I want all of that. And HubSpot has done a really phenomenal job. Their creator network people are great. I'm like, y'all are going to get poached by some other people, but <laughs> uh, I hope not. So I, yeah, that, that wasn't something that I pursued per se, but because I was consistent, because I continued to show up, because I shared my voice, it came about, right? And I planted the seed in January, right? Um, so I think all of that together was really what then brought about me joining the HubSpot Podcast Network. That's so awesome. And I just want to say, uh, having been in this space for seven years of podcasting, I've never heard anyone speak that highly about their network. And so- a, that means a lot, but B, being the person you are and you can see through a lot of things, yep, <laughs> it says a lot to me about their ish and how they've got their stuff together. You know, like, yeah, that's awesome to know that. Mm -hmm. Um, From a perspective of, well, I want to ask you, I want to ask you two things. One is what was one of the juiciest things that you've shared that you were like, I had a lot to say. I'm like, okay, Gosh. come on, spill it. What's the tea? What was one of the juiciest, bravest things, the bravest, juiciest things, one of them that you shared since you went back into podcasting? Oh yeah. Uh, that was probably, I think it was my second episode out of my four that I dropped together. I was publicly talking about how I had overhired, um, in my previous year. And I shared that I had to let a lot of people go in my business, um, because I've, I followed the advice of if you need, you know, one person, you really need to hire two, or if you need two people, you really need to hire four. And so my team expanded from like eight to 19. That's a um, lot. It was, don't recommend. <laughs> That's the moral of that episode. Um, it was so, I mean, like it was trauma for me, honestly, because I, I care genuinely for the people on my team. I care for my clients. And there were, because there were so many people and so many dynamics, there was a lot of things that did not align with my values that was going on in my business that I was unaware of simply because there were so many right, elements and it was just, there was a lot of brokenheartedness. Um, and so I shared like, again, there was a coach who, literally decided a coach in my program decided that she was the head coach. And so she created a separate Slack channel and started literally managing all the coaches. None of my coaches were listening to me, even though obviously I'm the boss, like there was some wild, wild stuff going on. And it was again, one of the biggest lessons that I, that I learned oh, in business, but I just, I sharing that was scary because yeah. it's like, what does that say about me as a leader, right? What does that say about me as a business owner? And I just recognize that again, people who've gotten to a certain level have all, I don't want to say all, but a lot of them have experienced what I've experienced where yeah. they did take advice similar to that. And they were like, you know, you know, so yeah. having, you know, people around you that understand and yeah. there's not that shame around it allowed me to, to share that vulnerability, totally. but it was, it was scary. <laughs> Yeah, it's so good. I love the underside, the belly of the beast, you know, because we need to know this stuff. Like, just yeah. like you need to know your messaging and what's your call yeah. to action and your Instagram, and you need to understand buyer beware, like what can come up. And I, I find it so fascinating that we all have this default, right? Of like how we allow ourselves to be supported what our stuff is that we still haven't worked out. And then the best therapy in the world is your business because yeah. it stares at you in the face. And Truly. it's like, hey, here you are again. What does this feel like? Oh, this feels like seventh grade when all the girls were ganging up on me. I recreated it. I'm like, awesome. oh my God, awesome. Yeah, exactly. Like I got to a place in my business where we had grown the team also to about 12 people, yeah. which was like eight more than we needed. 
Yeah. And I had a meeting with the, with my CPA and he was like, Oh, can I just like show you something really interesting for every dollar you make, you spend 60 cents on the dollar giving bonuses to your team. And I was like, I do. And he's like, yeah. Do you think you have some guilt and shame that you make money? And like, I don't get it. Like, why does everybody get a pair of Zadi, you know, in Voltaire sneakers? Why is everyone getting Cartier bracelets? Why are people being flown first class? I'm like, I don't know how to be supportive. <laughs> He's like, okay, this is such a drain on the business. Like, can we get you over your unworthiness so that you can actually have a profit? And I was like, yes, holy hell. It was just like, stop yes. it. <laughs> stop. You know, it's like totally. when people work for you, they yeah. don't take the risk right? They're not putting themselves out there. They're right. not, you know, spending the money on advertising or whatever. It else. It's like, no, yeah. they don't have, doesn't matter. My husband finally was like, listen, yeah. he's like, when I worked at Fox sports, do you think I went over to whoever Rupert Murdoch and was like, Hey Rupert, I think you're making $6 trillion. So get pony up. It's like, no, right. this is what you get paid to solve the problem called you're a lawyer. Here's your job. Go do it. Like you Here's don't need to answer for yourself. But when you're a girl, like a lot of us are, mm -hmm. you want to be liked. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. you, you get to this place where you realize you're going to need to set boundaries. You're going to yes. need to do it. And the other thing I found out, you guys, you want to hear the ugly truth about my story? Oh my God. <laughs> I found yeah. out that everybody was two timing me. That's what I found out. I found mm -hmm. out that every person besides one on my team really worked for three other people. And I thought they worked for me full time. And it was such a wake up call. Ugh. Yeah. And so no one was home. No one was actually home. So it was a really interesting situation. And I grew so much from it. And it just takes a tremendous amount of being willing to look at yourself and being willing to start to, you know, woman up, set some boundaries, know that you can be, you can be respected, but that means you can't always be liked. Yeah. Like people can't like you every second. Mm -hmm. If you want respect, just like your children, like my yes. children, I think they love me. I don't know that they always like me because sometimes I'm like, right. and the answer is no, my name is no, my sign is no, my number <laughs> is no. And it's just like in your business with your clients, sometimes you're going to be like, Hey, Hey, no, I don't do any more than that. Right. Sorry. That's it. Totally. Same thing with the people that you manage. And it's a whole lot. Yeah. It's a whole lot. And so I'm glad that you're giving some voice to that. Yeah. I want to ask you one more question about the podcast network. I'm so, so, so happy for you mm -hmm. in that. What's the thing that stands out to you that they actually provide you? Like, obviously there must be some minimum guarantee or like some money. Cause you said, I would like to get paid for podcasting. And then like it came in, yep. but more than the money, what do you feel like they're adding that is helpful? Because for anyone who's listening to who's starting a podcast, yep. we could be thinking about focusing on that for our own show. Mm -hmm. So the specifics about this network, so I can't speak to all the networks and what they do because literally every single one sure. is different. Um, I'm finding out, but what I loved about HubSpot was one, there were additional exposure opportunities. So uh, for me, you know, I love to speak. I love to, um, again, sh I'm going to nerd out about systems naturally. And so having other opportunities to be on their platform, not even just as their creator, but um, they were at podcast movement, whatever, a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, and they had a whole track and literally all of their speakers were creators. Like they literally bought a track for podcast movement and highlighted a bunch of their creators. And Which so- huge. Yeah, which is huge, right? And so that that was something that I was like, okay, like y'all get it. And then onward from that, we also are plugged into, again, a lot of resources. So uh, we'll have different, um, like Mopod is one that does like podcast advertising. And so uh, we're able to use them to get more downloads. I mean, get new listeners listening to our podcast and we get a special 
rate essentially because we're part of the network and so we're able to grow a lot of times faster than other people because we have you know a different rate than everybody else um so those are those are some key things and then also it was definitely like the other creators like if I didn't like the other podcasters in the community I didn't care who the network was I'm uninterested because association is every so true like who you are seen with um can definitely, uh, again, bring about some thoughts and opinions about you, which again, I'm not really about making decisions about that, but it does matter to me that again, if I'm standing by somebody who, you know, doesn't believe in Black Lives Matter, that's not only gonna be a problem for, you know, other people in my community, but it's gonna be a problem for me. So like those sorts of things that um, were very important to me and, HubSpot's creator team is also very diverse. Like there's um, a black woman who runs it, a Jewish gal who's the customer support. Um, I think he's Hispanic. Um, He's of Spanish descent, um, is the community manager. So like, I see the vibrancy in like the actual people who are are running the show. It's not just, you know, a bunch of white dudes. So um, that was also something that I was like, okay, great. Cause again, a lot of podcast networks you know, they're, yeah. uh, who is it? As Berna likes to say, it's like pale, stale. And so I don't remember what her last one is, but just 100%. like, you know, 100%. Those, those I, are important. I think if you really peel it back, most podcast network that say that they are a podcast network are only selling advertising. That's, that's yes. all they're doing. They're like, we sell yeah. ads. They don't know the first thing about helping you get exposure or growing your show or helping you to integrate into any of those extra opportunities that you just talked about. And it's so cool that they are such a disruptor in this space. It sounds like they're really innovative and I love that you gave them such high marks. I want to let you um, go and I want you to tell us where we can find you, where we can come to the event, where we can follow the podcast and all the things. All, all the things. Yes. So I'm on Instagram. That's my jam. So at systems saved me uh, and you'll see um You'll see my bonus sign every once in a while pop up. Um, and then my podcast, The System Saved Me. So I'm pretty awesome. easy to find. Pretty much just System Saved Me everywhere. Amazing. Thank you so much for all the time and all the love. Yes. I so appreciate you. And you're such a breath of fresh air. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Kathy. This is wonderful. Y'all are so lovely. It's been fun to, I know we didn't get to talk all of you, but I saw all the comments and everything, which was so lovely. Amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Have a good one, Jordan. All right. You too. Thank you.